Should you have your compressor pedal always on or should you use extreme settings on your compressor? I will cover that in this video. I will give you five things to consider when dialing in your compressor settings. And at the end of this video, I will give you four helpful tips that can help you find better compressor settings or make greater use out of your compressor. So make sure you watch the whole video and don't miss these tips. Let's start. Hello and welcome to another video. If you've been playing electric guitar for worship for a while, you probably know that over the last years compression has become really important, especially if you want to really nail that sound like Hillsong or Bethel, you definitely want to have a look at compression. We see guys like the guitarists from Hillsong, like Nigel Hendroff or Michael Guy Chislett or Bethel, let's say Michael Pope or David Hislop, just to name a few. They all use compression, but they are not just using a little bit compression here and there, but they use heavy compression and always on. You can see that pretty much everywhere nowadays and a lot of folks seem to adopt that approach. And I get the idea, there's something really interesting about that sound. But where does it even come from? Why do people use that? Well, my best guess is that it's all coming from the grid. If you don't know what I mean by the grid, it's basically the grid you have in every major music making software, let's say Logic, Ableton Live, Pro Tools. You always have this grid. You can align everything you play perfectly on the bars. And a lot of worship music that we hear these days that's recorded, even stuff that's being played live, it's all produced in software where you can align your music perfectly on the grid. We have synthesizers programmed directly on the grid. We have loops, percussion, and it's all this perfectly aligned and perfectly leveled audio material. So if you think about that, how do you fit in as a guitarist in such a kind of music? Well, one of the answers would be to get your timing really tight, really perfect. But one of the other obvious answers, of course, would be to use compression to really nail your levels and your dynamic range. It helps to keep your guitar up there with all the synths that are going on, with the loops, with the backing tracks, and it eliminates all the sloppiness in one's playing. Maybe you're having a bad day and your levels are a bit all over the place. Easy solution, just slap a compressor on. Now, if all you're after is to really nail that perfect till song or battle sound, go for it. And I'm not here to discourage you from that or to talk negatively about that. More power to you. I just want to give a bit more perspective on that and give you a few things that you might consider when setting your compressor levels. Let's go. Number one, the compressor limits the sound of your amp. Most worship guitarists like to set the gain on their amp to be on the edge of breakup. That's how we call it. And it's this point where you can play lightly and have that clean sound and you can dig in a bit harder on your strings and get some overdrive going. And with that kind of sound, if you play normal, you get this ever so slightly overdriven sound that works really well on chords still, because it's not heavily overdriven or distorted, but it's not completely clean. It's just a bit more interesting to listen to. Now think about what happens if you slap on some heavy compression on that. You obviously lose that ability to control your amount of distortion or overdrive or just this dynamic that lies in that. You are losing all of that by slapping on tight compression. Now a little bit compression won't hurt, but if you use very tight compression, you will definitely lose a lot of this very interesting dynamic range. Reason number two, 
it makes your music sound boring. If you have that tight compression going on all the time, in every part, in every song, you have no variation of dynamic range, well, what do you get? Of course, you always get the same. You still might use different stages of overdrive or boost, maybe after your compression pedal, but still your choices of dynamic range are very limited and it's just not going to sound very interesting if you use that all the time. Also, it makes the band as a whole sound more boring because all the keyboards are already at the same dynamic range. They're already having very compressed sound. You have your backing tracks, your loops, your percussion loops going on all at the same level or basically the same level. A pretty narrow dynamic range. Now, if you're doing the same thing with your electric guitar, it's not going to be very interesting. There's not going to be a lot of variation. Of course, as a worship band, it's not necessarily our intention to be very outstanding, very interesting all the time, because we want to fo have to focus on Jesus. We want to have the focus of the congregation on worship and not on ourselves. But at the same time, making boring music, our worship music, is also not really serving anyone. And it's not very inspiring to get people to worship. And an electric guitar is not a very dynamic instrument to begin with. So if you just have ever so slightly more dynamic range, it's not really going to distract people necessarily or draw a lot of attention to you as a guitar player. Reason number three. Using heavy compression all the time is making you a worse guitar player. So a lot of the feel we have when playing guitar comes from us hearing what we play and making adjustments to how we play. There's this constant feedback loop going on of us recognizing what the result of our playing is, how hard we touch the strings, how hard we hit the strings with our black. So if you are using heavy compression, you lose a lot of that. Suddenly it doesn't matter anymore how hard you dig in, how sloppy you play. It all kind of sounds the same. You are having a bad day as a guitarist. You have this Sunday that we all have where maybe your playing is not so tight. All of a sudden it doesn't matter anymore. Well, maybe that's a positive. But on the other hand, that's also a negative because yes, the compressor is covering up some of that for you. But at the same time, you as a musician actually want to improve over time. You want to learn. You don't want to get used to a situation where it doesn't matter anymore if you play lousy. But I guess you actually want to improve your skills. You want to grow as a musician. You want to grow with the gifts that you've been given. And I would argue you should want that. So I would argue we should at least not use our gear to cover up mistakes permanently, but we should actually work on our skill set. Reason number four. It makes your guitar not sound like a guitar anymore. Now, hold on a minute. What do you mean by that? It doesn't sound like a guitar anymore? If you think about it, what really makes or breaks the sound of an instrument is the first attack. If you think, for example, about a piano, a piano has a very characteristic attack, the hammer hitting the strings. And if you use your thumb, for example, to play a note on your guitar, it will sound very different than if you use, for example, a light pick or even if you use a heavy pick. So attack is really important. And one of the things a compressor changes most drastically is the attack of the note. That first transient, you hitting the strings, what you get if you use heavy compression. To me, it feels more like a bell sound, maybe an electric piano sound. It really drastically changes the characteristic of this electric guitar.
So at least to me, that's one reason that I, at least not all the time, want to use that heavy compression. Sometimes it's cool to have that sound, it's a good option, but I don't want to necessarily use that all the time. And number five, it's mostly unnecessary in the context of modern music. If you think about a guitar, an electric guitar in itself, it's already not that kind of dynamic instrument. Now a compressor does make a difference in sound, definitely, but the guitar itself, even with a clean sound, is already not super dynamic. If you look at the waveforms, for example, of a guitar that's being recorded in a digital audio workstation versus the signal of someone singing a human voice or let's say drums, they are very drastically different. The voice is very dynamic, it definitely needs compression. Drums can be very explosive sounds, but especially an electric guitar, it's more of a narrow range. It doesn't have huge breakouts, extreme transients, and even more so if you put on overdrive or if you have an amp that's going into saturation. You really don't have that much of a dynamic range anymore to begin with, because that's actually one side effect of overdrive. It's compressing your sound, especially if you have that saturated amp or let's say a Helix or a Camper that's simulating that saturation. You already have a lot of compression and you might want to have a compressor for the guitar sound in itself, but looking at it from a point of dynamic range, if it's actually helping the greater context of the music to make the band as a whole sound more tight, you really don't need much of extra compression. Now one of the things I really love about the Helix and especially the latest firmware update, I believe it's 2.9, is that you can actually see on a compressor how much gain it's taking off. So you're seeing the amount of gain reduction. To me, that's super helpful. I'm super thankful for that. So as I promised in the beginning, I will now give you four tips that you can use to maybe switch up the use of your compressor a bit. Number one, you could just switch off your compressor from time to time. If you really love that worship sound, that Hillsong type, that Bethel type sound, and you're really hyped about nailing that perfect sound, then by all means go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. But maybe there are a few songs or even just sections of songs where you don't want to use that. And rather than keeping your compressor always on, you might think about switching it up from time to time and making more use of the dynamic range your rig can provide. Number two, use less aggressive settings. Definitely even I myself have used compression a lot but I tend to use it at less aggressive settings. Let's say just a ratio of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 and a less aggressive threshold setting go a long way to just taking the edge off your signal but still having enough room to make use of the dynamic range your amp can provide to have that range where if you play lightly you still get clean sound and if you play harder you go into overdrive. <laughs> sound like that, you might even keep that always on or almost always on, but it's not necessarily going to crush the signal in that way. Tip number three, use blending. Maybe if you have a compression pedal or maybe you have something like the Helix or the Camper, you might have a control to blend in your compressed signal with the clean dry signal. Thereby you get this strong compression effect, but you still have a bit of that dynamic range. And tip number four, that's my favorite and you can use that if you use any kind of digital gear like a Helix, a Camper, plugins, whatever it is. You can put your compressor at the end of your signal chain. 
or at least put your compressor after your amp block. Now what that does is you have your guitar going straight into your amp or your overdrive pedals, whatever it is, and you have your complete dynamic range. If you play lightly, you get a clean sound. If you dig in hard, you have overdrive. Can go pretty extreme with that even and the compressor after your amp block will cut off the harsh edges and will level out the differences in volume and you get a pretty even volume with a possibly high dynamic range or a higher range of gain structure so to say Alright, I hope this was valuable for you. Maybe it's food for thought, maybe it's just things you want to consider. Feel free to like the video, feel free to subscribe, I would be very happy about that and see you in the next video. Bye!